Hey guys, Scott from Aristocob.com here. Oh, we're just jumping into it like that, huh? I know I am. All right, well Seth from all over the internet here as well. So if you haven't figured this out, the three of us, we are Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club, but we are Al Fresco. Al right. and Fresco. <laughs> uh, I really don't know what that means. We're outdoors. Ah. Uh, it's, as you can tell, it's still hot and sweaty in the Carolinas but we figured that this would at least be give us a little bit of wind, unlike what we get in my shop. So we're outside today and probably next week too. Who yeah. knows, maybe the week after that. <laughs> yeah, we come to a local um, business park that has a, a really nice lake and uh, walking trail. It's actually where my sister did her engagement photos. So We took some family of, pictures here too one yeah, time. We're thinking some places that we could come. We should spin the camera. Pretty around. nice. Check this out. Don't move the tripod. That's the point of a tripod. No, it's too late. I see that. Well, good luck getting that back where it was. No, I won't ever do it. Close enough. Um, so today we're going to be smoking some tobacco that was sent to us from a gentleman uh, named Brian Huber. Thank you. And uh, Brian, his nickname is Bam Bam. He uh, contacted me a couple months ago and said, what address can I send you something? With a nickname like Bam Bam, who knows what you're going to get. But he sent us a, uh, a little jar of tobacco that smells wonderful. And we will smoke it. So mm -hmm. I am smoking this in uh, the official Mark Women's Breakfast Club pipe. And that is the Morgan Nose Warmer. However, this one's unusual. This one happens to be a, uh, a Magna Cob. Um, I didn't make many of these, and I didn't make any of them for sale. Why? Because um, very few of these pipes have a wooden bottom in them. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was not a part of the original plan to have a wooden bottom in the, in the nose warmer. But every now and then, Missouri Meerschaum will get a, a corn cob that is otherwise in great shape and ready to be used for this size pipe, but it's a bit too pithy. Right. So every now and then, we'll get a, a shipment of these in that'll have a couple with the wooden plug. And I sat a few of those aside just in case anybody requested one. And then I made a couple of the Magna Cobs for myself to uh, keep around in my, in my van. So. so speaking of the Magna Cob, depending upon when you are viewing this video, if this happens to be after August 8, 2016, they are no longer available because of the FDA. Sucks, don't it? Yeah, so we've never really talked about the FDA. We've never talked about much it. since the deeming regulations have yeah, this year uh, we been talked released. A lot about it, yeah. yeah, we talked a lot about it two years ago, mm -hmm. and when they announced what they were, were going to do, and um, we at the time, at the time, uh, we kind of got some criticism because a lot of people thought that we were overreacting looking at some of the language in the law and how even though they were making it clear that it was being applied to e-cigs um, there was enough ambiguous stuff in the law that it, it frightened us because we were afraid of the impact it might have on pipe smoking and um, unfortunately uh, it turns out that all our fears were, were right um, and we kind of stayed away from it uh, not on purpose uh, honestly I have been so busy with work that I haven't had the time to educate myself um, on what the deeming regulations are like I had two years ago. And um, which is the reason why I haven't wanted to open my mouth about it because there's a lot of misinformation. There is a lot. Being passed around. Um, and for me, I have now read the final uh, regs three times, 800 plus pages. And um, I still see exactly what we feared before, and I see even more misinformation being shared. And, and I guess the one thing that I would say now, and, and this is, somebody, somebody made a comment to me about a comment that I made in, in, in the comments of a video. All right, how meta? Yes. Made a comment about how, well, uh, we're going to be okay with this product because it is grandfather. And I had to say, well, not necessarily, because even though a product was pre-2007 
when they say uh, any product before 2007 is grandfa grandfather. By the way, before you continue with this, if you yes. have no idea what we're talking about, <laughs> Um, there are some people online on YouTube that are, are doing a phenomenal job of sharing this, but the long and short of it is the FDA has, has was given uh, was given the authority by Congress a handful of years ago to deem certain things as falling under their their jurisdiction that they felt necessary. First, they were given jurisdiction over tobacco, right, and they were given the authority beyond that to to land grab other things as right. they felt necessary. And so a couple years ago, they released what their proposed regulations were gonna be. Um, now they've put them into effect. And the, the very quick and dirty summary is um, that anything that was created before 2007 is in theory um, grandfathered. And this has a great impact on the electronic cigarette community because before 2007, there was nothing except for the cigarettes look-alikes that you can buy at the gas station now, the blue cigarettes. That was the style that was available before 2007. Which is what the e-cig users determined pretty quickly. It's garbage. was garbage. And so they, you know, there are now, there are now uh, almost 10 years of innovation that's happened since then that is not going to be, um, not going to be, processed as quickly and so one of the big concerns on that side is um, how long is it going to take to get approval on new products and they're predicting a a basically a bottleneck of time two three four five years before certain products might be approved and also expense a hundred thousand um, dollars or more to get certain products approved and now uh, what what was not immediately evident is they also have said anything that is involved in the consumption of nicotine essentially is a tobacco product so for the e-cig side that means batteries that means the atomizers all of the electronic components are tobacco products can be regulated and taxed by the fda as a tobacco product for pipe smokers that means the pipe that means the tobacco, that filters. means filters, that means anything that's used in the consumption of tobacco is a tobacco product per the FDA and can now be regulated as such. There are some people that are much smarter than us that are talking about this in the right way online. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll try to put some links down below where you can find more information out uh, from them. But uh, educate yourself because the long and short of it is uh, uh, Pipe smoking, electronic cigarettes, a lot of things that are smoking adjacent are going to quickly be going away. How quickly? Uh, almost immediately. Yeah, August, August 8th, 2016 is when the first uh, timeline hits, and that is where products that were produced after 2007 uh, that are not considered grandfathered fall under the regulations. Um, now, here's my concern, and, and, I, and I express this on my channel a little bit, and that is, even though a product has been grandfathered, it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be able to be legally available for sale. Uh, they will still have to do certain things, including having the product um, registered. So it doesn't mean that the product has to be approved, which that's part of the process. If you guys need to pass through, you're welcome to. Okay. Um, but registration isn't free. Right. Registration comes at a cost. And it once you once you submit it for registration, it's not necessarily a guarantee that it'll be approved even though it was grandfathered. Right. Um, additionally, there is a, a second process that has the products will have to go through. As far as the new products, they'll have to submit not only a registration but there's a health document where they have to break down and highlight or, or detail every single component of that product. Um, and each of those components may require a test, right? That's something that the FDA has to decide. Well, guess what? The DEEM products are not exempted from having to submit that documentation. So, you know, yeah, folks are saying that, well, I don't, have to, I don't have to worry. I've been making the same pipe for the last right. 50 years. 
well, you may have to do some things yet that it's still going to cost right. you money. And, and where it gets even more ridiculous is how you can have a part that has already gone through FDA regulation, and if you integrate that part, which is FDA approved, into your product, um, they may still require it to be tested for that specific application. Or um, closer to pipe smokers, this tobacco right here may have been blended in-house by a, uh, a pipe shop. Um, they took two products that were both approved, you know, Lane 1Q and um, Lane BCA, two off the shelf, maybe grandfathered or maybe tested and approved. As soon as they put those two things together and offer them as a separate new product, that product will have to be tested and approved. Uh, it doesn't matter that the components are grandfathered. Two grandfathered components together create something new. So what that means for you as a pipe smoker is most of your pipe shops will no longer have, many of your pipe shops will no longer have house blends because it would cost too much to get approval for every house blend. The other, the other thing in, you know, there are a lot of talks in the community about ways that it could be worked around, um, but uh, free samples is another thing that is uh, gonna be restricted. Um, yeah, some of our favorite pipe shops over the years have had their, their jars on display and they'll say, hey, go ahead and fill your bowl with something you'd like to try. That's, that'll be illegal now. Now maybe they'll say a dollar a bowl, right? Or there might be, there might be some other workarounds there. Um, you know, I know in, in certain, certain instances, and I, again, having not, uh, this is just speculation, I know in, in North Carolina there have been some grandfathering laws that would allow as long as you restrict anyone to enter into the building to be a certain age and it doesn't leave and kind of some of those alcohol laws almost, um, then then they, they might be able to make a, an exception. But now, w one of the reasons why I know um, Sparky Pipes announced his retirement uh, as a carver and actually several others that we know have, have announced that they're retiring as well. Some of them originally were thinking about workarounds. Uh, they were jokingly saying, well, I don't sell pipes, I sell wood carvings. Well, the problem with that is the FDA has established a hotline where people can turn other people in. It's like, well, who would turn somebody in for that? So let's imagine that we have somebody out there who is a pipe carver, um, is a pipe carver that inherited a bunch of money and, uh, you know, they don't care what it's going to cost. They're going to keep on carving. Or they're really successful. Just, or they're really successful. Uh, that pipe carver then sees someone else selling pipes but calling them wood carvings. And that person's gone through the, pro the correct process. Right. You know, spent five hundred thousand dollars to get yeah. pipes approved by the FDA. You know, that person just may very well be the one that's going to call and, and tattletale. Um, so, you know, those workarounds, while clever, um, we we all know that they're they're not legit, and someone's going to get Do in trouble. Do we? I mean, head shops have been doing it for years. <laughs> those those not uh, for for tobacco use only. Yep. Pipes. Yeah. Yep. A water pipe. I mean, is this a tamper or is this a golf tee? Well, if it's, a, if it's is, a tamper, is it an accessory or a component? Well, because we use that's this. A thin line. We use this while we're smoking. Right. So it's probably a. It's probably tobacco. It's probably tobacco. So um, we may not be making um, pipe tampers available anymore, but we might have golf tees in the future. No. Nope. We'll at least have golf tees. I business, can tell you that. Cards. <laughs> Yeah. So, when we sat down, I don't think we really uh, meant to go off into that. And like I said, there are some people out there that are much, they have educated themselves much better on the second end now that things have been released and they're, they're really fighting a good fight. Um, for us and for those of you within the community, some of the things that, that um, you might find frustrating as we do is uh, this has already caused some people that we know have met personally to lose their jobs um, because there's no longer need for um, someone tobacco to, blenders. to blend tobacco if it can't be sold. Um, it has caused uh, pipe shows to be canceled. Um, the Nashville pipe show was canceled because of this because they couldn't get vendors on board with... Still looks like there's going to be a get together right so if you've already got right. plans to be there please be there yeah and if there's any way we can swing it we'll yep. be there 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, absolutely. Some of our favorite YouTube um, pipe carvers are no longer carving. Uh, you know, so there's been a, a ripple effect. And, um, well, and, and there are and a lot of people that are trying to fight it. Aristocop.com. We have products that we will not be able to sell. Um, our Cobb Foolery Contest has spurred a couple people who otherwise were not really pipe makers to modify cobs and make them available for sale. That'll be illegal. Yeah. So, uh, it really is a shame. Uh, we'll, again, check check the description. We'll link to some people that are, are trying to fight this and, and follow their advice and how you can get involved with that. Um, whether it be by contacting your your congressman or um, putting some donation towards some of the, the organizations that are trying to fight this. And this is one of those things where, as people who both smoke pipes and vape e-cigs, uh, we find ourselves aligning with both sides of that. And um, it's, it's kind of surprising to us how often we see disunity and disharmony between the two groups, the, the e-cig group and the pipe smokers group, and they think that there's nothing in common right. um, between the two, and yet we're both in the same boat because of the same regulation. Yep. The result's going to be the same. All of us are losing, uh, you know, not potentially losing parts of a hobby that we love, um, losing access to... Um, parts of that hobby that we love and um, yeah there are workarounds for some people but that's so much more work and which is uh, going to raise costs and and ultimately ultimately as someone who has seen how vaping has affected um, a long time long term smoker um, and gotten them off of cigarettes you know it's scary to me to think of that person not having access to the thing that helped them get off of, of what was you know, filling their lungs with tar. So, uh, yep. Check the links, figure out what you can do, um, inform yourself. So, what do you think of that tobacco? I, I like it. I do too. In fact, I like it so much, I'm probably going to smoke it at least one more week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's, it's really, really good. Um, do we know, was this a. Uh, this a uh, it was a lane one Q lane one Q or <laughs> a blend yeah no it's got something else it, there's something uh, quite fruity in this mm -hmm. that is not a, a one Q component um, perhaps it's something from a brick and mortar bam bam fill us in on this what is this uh, thank you we're enjoying it and we do appreciate you thinking about us and sending us hopefully um, you're a satisfied uh, Aristocob customer mm -hmm. and there's no ricin in this I also just watched the last breaking season of, bad. Of Breaking Bad yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. Good season, though. Yeah, it was. All right, I think that's it for today. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we missed you last week. Where were you? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Where were we? Uh, around. <laughs> um, we've got some news on that front. Uh, we'll share soon. So um, hopefully we'll be seeing each other a little bit more frequently again. Anyway, have to make it a great week. Thanks for watching. That's my line. Yep. <laughs>